Hi, Nova Star again. <laughs> Well, I'm going to show you sink tube sabers today, okay? Uh, how to make them and how to wire them. And I'm going to show you that if you have this, and if you have this, then you may not need this. You guys ready? Let's get it done. Okay, there they are. You guys have seen them before, the basic sink tube sabers. I'll turn them on, ba and ba. They're both about a comparable blue color. Um, that's just for you guys to uh, see how they work in that. Um, Alright, so now let's shut these things off and actually look at the parts, which is probably most important for people who are saying, okay, well, what are the parts for all this kind of stuff they've been asking me. So obviously there's the sink tube. There's your lithium ion cell. Okay, it's a 3.6 volt cell. Uh, it has the PCB and actually you can kind of see it lumped in there with the uh, whatever shrink wrap and all that kind of stuff. You can get one that's more, I guess the best way of explaining it is coin cell shaped <laughs> that goes on the top or you even have some batteries where it's uh, built in and like for example you've got this one that I showed just a minute ago but whatever it doesn't really matter it's basic and it fits inside here very easily you don't have to sit there and play around with a bunch of trying to figure out how you're going to fit the battery in there. This is uh, Tim's 1.25 inch, uh, you know, uh, blade holder. That's the whole point. Obviously, what you're going to do with this is this would slide in here, and I'll see if I can do that with one hand here because I am holding the camera with it. Um, you know, actually, oh, it looks like this one would have to be ground down a little bit. But anyways, you get the idea. This is going to slide in there. You'd want to drill a couple holes in here so that you could uh, uh, mount it to it. You know, nothing fancy that you'd have to do, but you can see right on there how I did that. You know, this is one of the things in there for the uh, the blade screw and these are actually holding this uh, to the sink tube. Very easy. Obviously you'd want to drill a switch hole so that you could fit one of these little sub mini guys in there. Whoa! Okay. Hey cool, you can see the LED on there saying it's recording. But anyhow, um, that should be relatively simple. I like these because they have the preset screws in there. You can hear them, all that kind of stuff. And so it makes your job a lot easier. You don't have to get all fancy with the switch, and it can be uh, recessed down pretty well uh, once you just drill a few simple holes in your, your sink tube. I mean, that's not hard. Anyone can do that. That's very easy. Uh, and then finally, um, of course, here's the LEDs. There's two on this little thing. You don't need two, but anyways, there's your LED. And, of course, over that will go the optics. So... Um, you know, I'll just show people how that works. See if I can again do that with one hand. Come on, get on there. Whatever. <laughs> it's not fitting on perfectly right now. But you can see that's where they do. They settle right into the holes um, uh, with the little legs that they have. And you can see how this would just fit over the LED in a, in a certain way. Okay? You can use reflectors. That's why I put this on here. This isn't the best one. It's kind of an old one and all wrecked. But, you know, you don't have to use a collimator lens like this one. You can use a reflector. That's basically it. There's nothing else that you really need to do that'll make it any fancier. Now, going back to the whole fact that we have a single lithium ion cell, and you notice I didn't include on this thing, I didn't show you guys any resistors in this case. Okay, I said, you know, you're not using it. Someone might say that's pretty dangerous. Well, guess what? The forward voltage of this LED, which is like a Luxian 3 green, or whatever it is, you can have blue or whatever, but the Luxian 3 series, and a lot of LEDs actually, their forward voltage is around 3.85 volts, okay? Sometimes it's even less than that, like 3.6, 3.7. It's going to vary in there, but that's generally where you're finding it. Well, that's about the exact voltage of a lithium ion cell. So, when you match the voltage to the LED's forward voltage that uh, evenly, then you're going to get a little bit of an overdriven LED in the beginning, but as it starts to draw power from the battery, the voltage will drop and you'll get a nice even brightness on it that's about normal for the LED. It's not going to be perfect. Of course, you're direct driving, so you're not doing a, a good job of driving the Sabre or anything like that. Um, these are, again, directly driven, so you get this really bright you know, LED. Um, again, as I told you guys before in a different uh, video, this diffuser is not very good. No mirror tip. Uh, but anyways, it stays bright for a very long time, and then it will dim a little bit later on in the, the uh, LED's life. But it's perfect for a sink tube, and you don't need a driver for it or anything like that. Okay. Um, the last part that I didn't show, and this is relatively easy to do, is the recharge port. What you can do for these is um, 
something relatively simple. Um, I use these little stereo jack things, and you can use any number of them, uh, any types of them, I should say. Gosh, see if I can get this to show in there. And um, this one actually has three legs, so if you wanted to, you could probably do a kill switch on it, but I don't see why you'd bother with this kind of setup. Your uh, latching switch already does that. So anyways, um, this is pretty easy to wire up. I mean, come on. It doesn't get any simpler than that. Um, just attach one of the wires to one leg and the other, and be consistent when you go and do your uh, charger. Um, and, uh, you know, I'll show you guys a little bit of the charging. Okay, so let's charge the saber, right? Here we have these little charger setups. You can switch it to 7.2 volts. Whoops, well, whatever, it's slide all over. 7.2 volts, then 10.8 and 14.4, so it depends on what battery pack you put in here, but I don't think many of us are gonna be using 14.4. So bam, go. Let's, I'll go all the way back to the 3.6. Uh, the connector that I've used is a standard kind of mono jack, if I can put it in the camera, where is it? There we go. Um, that works for me, you can do whatever the heck you want, it doesn't matter, you could use the Canon 2.1 millimeter ports, I just find it to be a little expensive for just doing a basic saber. Um, this is perfect for direct drive and resistors because it doesn't affect any kind of circuit. You're not going to blow anything up with this or cause any weird problems, okay? So then, for lack of a better way, I kind of prop this up on this garbage can here and uh, let's see if I can... I don't even think I can do this for with one hand because it'll all kind of slide in. I don't have a way of... I didn't secure all this stuff in here. So you kind of have to hold the battery in place to do it. So let me show you in a second here. Okay, sorry about that. It just takes two hands for me to plug it in. Now you can see it's totally plugged in there nice and tight. When I go down here, you of course see a red light, meaning it's about to explode. No, actually it's not. It's just charging, so there you go. Um, you know, when it's done, it's done. You don't have to do anything with these smart chargers. It's done. You don't have to worry about unplugging it, and it's that easy. So then if, when I was done uh, charging the saber. This one's probably almost all the way charged anyway, so it wouldn't be here for very long. What I would do is just disconnect that. That goes back to green because it doesn't have anything in there. And then, of course, on would go the cap and all that kind of stuff. Let's see if I can do it and it won't fall in the garbage can. Yeah! So skilled. One hand. Whew. Jedi Master Incorporated. Well, anyways, and so there you have it. Those are your sync tube sabers. Uh, I'm Novastar, and hopefully, if you guys put this kind of setup together, you can have fun with your lightsabers. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's something else I almost forgot. Listen to this. A lot of people are asking me about what happens, uh, Novastar, when you overdrive the LED. I heard, like, you kill the lifespan of it and you reduce its runtime. Well, guess what? Most LEDs, the high-powered ones like the Luxian 3, are rated for 100,000 hours of life. Well, that's 8,760 hours in a year, which would mean you could get 11.4 years of usage. That's running at 24 hours a day, 7 days a week for 365 days a year. Okay? That's crazy. Now that's if you run it at the rated uh, max continuous current, okay, or probably less. So when we're overdriving it, well, let's just say it's 50,000 hours, okay, cut it completely in half. No, 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 wait a minute, let's say it's 25,000 hours, we'll cut it in a quarter. But also, my saber, I'm talking about the flan sabers or whatever, they're lit maybe two to three hours total a week, even when I was doing the Bob projects, okay? Um, so, again, two to three hours a week. But let's just go nuts and say I was running them ten hours a week, which I think would be just, that's pretty ridiculous. I don't know anybody who has their saber on for ten hours a week. But anyways, so, ten hours a week for 52 weeks equals 520 hours. But we cut the LED's life down to 25,000 hours. And 25,000 hours divided by 520 hours a year equals, are you ready, 48 years of usage. That's right, 48 friggin' years of usage. So, let me just say this. If you actually run your saber that long with the same friggin' LED in it, and you're now like 105 years old, I will come over to your house and personally give you a new LED. Probably a better one at that point. I would think in 48 years, they're probably going to be a better technology out there, okay? So, anyways, I'm Novastar, and have fun with your long-lasting lightsabers. <laughs> <laughs>